What's up guys, me off of Tech Designs here and I'm back with another techie video for you um, on keyless entry uh, devices or key fobs rather. <clears throat> now I watched a video that BigClive.com did on a cheapy Chinese key fob similar to this thing here or one of these maybe. Um, something like this or a Ford van. Um, and his and he did a pretty good video about that I do recommend checking out his channel of course he is a favorite of mine <coughs> and as someone in the comments mentioned something about OEM key fobs and I happen to have some from Dodge Chrysler garage door opener from Chamberlain a Viper alarm uh, this went to Ford and this is a generic and we're going to be opening these and I have some other tools at my disposal. I have a frequency counter. I don't know if this is going to work with a oscilloscope probe on it. I'm going to set it down to times one. There's the probe. The camera is out of focus. Oscilloscope probe. Frequency counter. 1.2 gigahertz. And I also have my laptop with SDR Sharp, a USB SDR dongle, and a rod antenna going up there. So, and the frequency we're going to be on is right around 315 megahertz. I'm right in the middle of 315 megahertz band, 315.5. I also need to go to amplitude modulation because key fobs uh, here on AM, um, our noise floor is a little high and that's because we've got some uh, stuff going on here. I'm not sure the bandwidth of key fobs, so I think they're pretty wide. Um, so, and I do have the batteries um, necessary for this. The, the good old CR 2032. Yep, can't see it. Come on, the camera. I got to really do something about this camera situation. The CR2032, that's not going to show up, is it? It's just not going to cooperate. And one of these key fobs takes a A23 battery, which is a 12-volt battery. One of them actually has a 12-volt battery in it. So I have the necessary batteries to do this. I also have a tool flathead that changes to a Phillips head if needed. So we can pry things open and I got one, two, three, four, five, seven of these to go through. So we're gonna dig in. So I'm gonna set you back up there on that. I don't have a stand for this cell phone. But I so what do we want to go first? I'll go down. Let's take the driver of screws and we'll just start popping one open. I guess this one might uh, work. This, is, I suspect, is going to be more like the one that Clive did on his channel. It's, yeah, it's going to be pretty straightforward. You know, we got our battery holder here. And it pulls out the same way with the rubber. This one went to my Ford. This one has a chip, a big chip on it. It's also got an RF chip on it, transistor. That white, that white chip would be the RF finals, I think. And this trace is the antenna, I believe. I'm not really sure. I haven't opened this thing up before. That's nasty. And it's got a chip with a number of... 151945-1 on the first line. Second line is 16 LCR Lima Charlie Romeo 54A Alpha slash SO Sierra Oscar. Um, the bottom line has 000823H as in hotel. So that is, this is going to be your controller, your microcontroller. I'm suspecting that's going to be our RF driver right there. This uh, chip, this uh, white 
four leg transistor. It looks it looks a lot like an RFPA driver for such things. Um, on the back we have our support circuitry and we look like what is a crystal clock oscillator. I'm not sure of the frequency on that. Surely it's not 350. I think it'd be 315. It says 350p on it. So I guess the only thing to do is to really just take a battery and stick in here. And we'll get our buttons back on in the right way. And yep, we're getting something. And uh, we will mash. Yep, there it is. I'm mashing the button. There it is, right there, right under 315. This thing's actually off frequency a little. So what we're gonna, what's my mouse? What we're gonna do is go right about center ways and I'll increase the volume. Three. That's, that's what that sounds like. There's the panic. That's lock. This is unlock. Well. That's unlock. That's lock. It's AM modulated, so it's gonna change as I move it around. So yeah, that's that's the Ford uh what are these other buttons? That would be probably start and stop. They're very similar in sound, but in the code, they're actually sending out bits of code. So, I'll put you back up here with the battery. So that's that one. Now all these things, I don't have receivers for them, and I'm probably have made the neighbor's car panic or something. I don't know. Um, probably not. I'm in an, actually, I'm in an isolated, RF isolated room here. So, uh, that one's back together. Right over there. Now we have a Viper alarm fob. Key fob, or whatever you want to call it. Let me pry it open. Um, this one is very similar to the one that Clive did, as it's got an 8-pin chip support and it too has a driver transistor on it looks like for RF um that's, oh gosh that's price it's not oh come out there is it oh oh here we go something's happening so this one is very similar to the last it's got an LED on it it's got our pads and it's got our little rubber pads it's got an LED there yeah, I know, computer's telling me to do something. <laughs> Alright, so we've got a battery. I'm not sure what frequency this is going to be. So we're going to take the probe. We're going to mash a button. Okay, I'm getting a frequency of about 900 mega. Really? 904, huh? So we'll change our computer to 9... 904. And we'll mash a button. I'm still not seeing anything in the way of that. Um. Hmm. 
This is all over the place. It may be... I'm not really sure what this one's on. <laughs> to be honest. Um, okay, here's an antenna trace. How about the... One eighty one seventy two wait, what? That that's not making really any good sense why it would be on such an obscure frequency. Oh we'll find it. No problem. I just do not know what they want. Let me go to 433 and see. Oh yeah, here we go. This is a pulse type. There it is, right there. Found it. This one's on 433870-ish. Now it was... These are just working off a of pulse type. Oh, hang on. Something's... So they're definitely on different frequencies. Yeah, there it is right there. I'm nowhere even close to it. 433878. 875 actually. That uh Yeah, the rubber is kind of wonky on that one. Alright, so that's the Viper. Get my battery out of there. So what we had so far, I had an ink pen here. I have no idea what I've done with it. So I was going to write these down. What am I going to do with a pen? So hang on, just one a minute, I'll be right back. Alright, found the pen. And after some touring around with the Chamberlain, I found that the Chamberlain key fob is indeed borked. It does not work at all. I wasn't getting anything across the spectrum on it, so we won't be messing with that. I figured we would go into the power touch, the one that takes the big 12 volt massive cell. <laughs> um, I suspect this will be on. 433. So put the cell back in. Yep, 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 yep it works. This LED comes on. We'll put the screw back in. I'm not sure what this button on the back is for. There was a sticker and there's a button there on tactile. So I'll go back to uh, 315. Scope too soon here. Get it open. Ooh, this one's got some crusties in it. Be surprised if it does work. <laughs> Be fair. Here's the antenna on this thing. Here's an inductor. Looks like it would be doing something. Well, how about this? It's a 12 volt battery on it. One. 
These things are so hard to uh, nail down. 222? No, it's not 222. Oh, sure, what? Common uh, thing for key fobs is 433 and 315. I'm not seeing anything here either. I don't think it would be 900 megahertz. Shouldn't be. Let me go to 920. See what. Uh, Oh, nothing there. What is that? Oh, that's a gas meter. <laughs> so this one's not doing the business either, it seems. This 118. Can't be on that. Um, I've seen weirder things. I'm not even getting a transient spike on this SDR over here, so we'll chalk this one up as being bad as well. I'm starting to run into a lot of bad ones. Of course, the corrosion on the back doesn't tell, tell a, uh, you know, doesn't reassure the fact that it would be working. Okay, I'm moving along here onto the. These are probably going to be on the same frequency, these uh, Dodge. So we'll go with a 5 button because it's more interesting. It's got more buttons. Oh. Now, I don't believe it. Oh, there we go. Right. There's the insides. And already I can tell we have our controller. We have a bar antenna right here, and here's our drive. And nothing on that side, so we'll leave the rubber on. Um, I'm going to have to put it back together to get a signal on this. Very minimalistic in this one for sure. It's port transistors and resistors and capacitors. This chip is a PCF PCF Papa Charlie Foxtrot 7941 on the first line and then we have D as in Delta 33 2612 on this uh, microcontroller and this other here is going to be another, it looks like another drive type transistor. Can't make out the number on that. I couldn't make out the number on the others either. But we definitely have a bar antenna right there. Definitely put some work into this one. So we're going to get the battery in it. The battery goes in this one, like so. I'm going to pop it back together. So, and it should be I already did it, so I'm not really sure where Oh, there it is I need more bandwidth Jesus, that's why it sounds so odd. I can't get any more bandwidth. <laughs> so, okay, this bandwidth won't go. What about wide, I think? Oh, wait, no. Yeah, it's got to be a. Um... Okay. 
So there it is, right on the money. This is a uh, side door one, side door two, unlock, lock, back hatch, and panic. Yeah, there it is. Sounds like a satellite beacon, don't it? Well, I'm pretty sure all these are going to be the same, same frequency. This battery fits out here. But we'll try one more shits and giggles. Let's go this Chrysler. Got an FCC ID of uh, Mike 3 November 5 Whiskey Yankee 72 X ray X ray. I want to look that up. <laughs> yeah, this one's got, they all three of these are going to have the same FCC ID. I want to look that up. Oh, this is backwards. That's the end. This is going to be on the same frequency. That choice one's a little off. That seems to be a little lower. It falls within bounds. But, uh, 215 Ford and a Dodge. And these. Uh, I can't remember. The Dodge and the Ford is going to be on the same. The uh, Chamberlain, I have no idea. The power touch, even though the LEDs lighting, I'm not getting any stable I'm not getting anything stable. Out of it. It's all over the place. So yeah, um, OEM key fobs, keys, keyless entry devices is what we call them in the States usually. That's what I call them anyway. So we got uh, the full on six button, three button, three button, and a three button there. And our frequencies, 315 megahertz, 433, and that bandwidth looks almost like, 30, I'm not sure how wide that bandwidth is, it's pretty wide. And these are going to be AM modulated, all these are AM, that's why I move them around, the signal changes intensity and whatnot. I had some other hmm. but, uh, yeah. Oh, also the Viper. Yeah, the Viper. So we got these OEMs and a OEM replacement is what this was. This for Ford. This actually went to my explorer that I had at a 01. I mean, I don't know, a 99 Explorer. And this is what unlocked the door and the horn beeper and all that. And this was for the Viper car alarm that I pulled out of said vehicle that was annoying as hell. And these were to a van that I had that I didn't like and uh, returned it and got something else. So, <laughs> yeah, um, key fobs, man, key fobs. They are. So yeah, anyway, I uh, don't know what else to say about these other than they are what they are. I can't remember if I didn't read the... Oh, I didn't give you the chip number on this little one, did I? I can't even see that. Good God. I cannot. HCS 
three zero zero. I don't know what that is. I don't have a magnifier handy. Actually, yes, I do. Yes, I'm lying. I'm fucking lying. I do have a magnifier handy. So what is this chip number? I'm gonna set it down. I think it matters what I do, I still can't see it. Um, chip number. Man, I really cannot see this. And my light is not cooperating at all with me. Strange as that may be. I swear that looks like Hotel Charlie Sierra 300. Let's get down. HCS 300. That's the top line. My God, that is so tiny, and it's like blending in with the. Uh... Oh oh oh. I can make out an N, but I don't know what the... I slash SNG637. I slash SNG637. Double check that. Nope. SNO. Oh, whether that O is an O or zero is beyond me. I can't. It looks like a zero. So we'll, we'll go on this. That's the second line. So, either LS or ISN. I, I don't know. But there is a slash between that L or I and S. So, that is an eight pin. <laughs> that little guy right there that is. Oh. What is the number on this driver? What if I can see that? God, how do they? Never mind. I don't want to know. Obviously, something's a mystery. Yeah, I, I am. EPCOS eight two R eight two zero. I don't know that. It's a four pin. It's going to be the RF driver. The thing with OEM key fobs that I've noticed is they usually have a dedicated RF chip in them. So that way they go a longer distance than your cheapy Chinese type. Um, yeah, I'm not going to draw your diagrams out. You know, like this one here. The Chamberlain, it's got an inductive load, it's a capacitor, it's got a R390T clock oscillator, and it's got a chip on it that is probably going to be the same as that other one. <laughs> I have no idea what frequency this is on. It's not stamped on the board. It could be anywhere. It could be 900 megahertz, it could be 315, it could be 433, it could be 2.4, it could be anywhere. All right, first line is 125 with Charlie 0218. Second line is 5 Hotel 5003 Charlie. That is the chip number for this. Interesting. I wonder what happened. Oh my, this don't work. <laughs> All right. Last time we're going this one to get your chip number off this one too. You guys can look up all these chips. I'm not going to look them up and print them out. Let's take this battery out. 
Well, there's the number there, 8537A, and I can only assume that this is some custom, uh, custom deal. Eight, five, eight, five, three, seven, A, and that is a eighteen pin old school. I see through hole stuff here. Try to get this paper off. See if there's another number, an actual number on it. That's probably going to be a firmware revision number on this stuck over it. And we have a PT number. We have a PT number of Papa Tango 2262 on the first line and 9721 with the space and N as in November on the bottom. So the tuning capacitor, inductive, all through whole stuff. Yeah, this is probably was operating in 315 megahertz at some point, but now since it's for some reason it's got corrosion, I assume that this is no good. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that was uh, a look into these things, and I'm gonna end the video here with that before it runs on entirely too long. This uh, key fob extravaganza of the OEM type and if you like the video leave a like leave a comment questions suggestions all of that is welcome everything but negative is welcome of course and as always guys I will see you in the next video Well, before I go, just one of the uh, many things you can do with an SDR dongle. If you're into RF or curious about RF and don't have the money to buy a radio police scanner or any of that stuff, you can always buy one of these little guys. It's an RTL SDR USB dongle. They usually go anywhere from $8 on up on eBay and they come with a little magnet antenna <coughs> and with a program called SDR Sharp and some know-how. You can tune in to your local radio stations right on your laptop computer. Of course, you can tune in other things too. You can tune in uh, police radio, aircraft, railroads, the NOAA weather broadcast, 162 point four. It's not my area, but it's picking that up from this room on that rod, and there is shielding this room. This thing has a good receiver in it, by the way. This little, this is it right here. This part. So yeah, um, just thought I would uh, share that on the tail end of this video, and I will see you guys in the next video.